Welcome to the micro message for July 4th, 2021. Because I'm doing this outdoors on the 4th of July, you might hear some fireworks, and if that happens, just think of them as sound effects. Have you ever just wanted to shake your head at something that might have been disappointed or that you didn't agree with or just seemed downright strange? Well, Jesus had good reason to shake his head after what after the events of what happened in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown. His disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were surprised. Where did this man get all this? What's this wisdom he's been given? What about the powerful acts accomplished through him? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't he Mary's son and the brother of James, Jose, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? They were repulsed by him and fell into sin. Jesus said to them, Prophets are honored everywhere except in their own hometowns, among their relatives, and in their own households. He was unable to do any miracles there except that he placed his hands on a few sick people and healed them. He was appalled by their disbelief. This ends the reading of the scripture. Jesus spent the first 30 years of his life living in Nazareth. He worked as a carpenter before he started his ministry. Word of Jesus' brilliant teaching, healing power, and miracle working preceded his visit to Nazareth. You would think it would be a triumphant return. The people should have welcomed him warmly. But that's not what happened. Just the opposite happened. The people rejected Jesus. You felt rejection. Maybe you were snubbed from a social group because you didn't fit in. Perhaps you moved to a new town and nobody would give you the time of day. There could be someone with whom you wanted to be friends, but they weren't interested. The translation you just heard said Jesus was appalled at the Nazareth townspeople. Other translations express Jesus' feelings in a similar way. Some of the words included uh, marveled, greatly surprised, wondered at their unbelief, and couldn't get over their stubbornness. Well, rejection hurts. It hurts your self-esteem. It can take away confidence. It can take a long time to get over the hurt of being rejected. So why did the people reject Jesus? Nazareth was like most small towns in that they were social classes. I know about that. I've lived in two small towns in my life, populations 10,000 and 12,000. The highest social classes consisted of people with more prestigious occupations, more wealth, better education, and higher status. There was a limited amount of status, though. If one person aspired to move up to the high class, it meant that someone else might lose some of their status. So people defended their status. Jesus was not in that highest class. As a carpenter, he was in the working class, which was considered respectable. But when he showed up and taught in the synagogue, he was behaving like someone in a higher class than a carpenter. The people of Nazareth had heard about Jesus' teaching, healing, and performing miracles. When Jesus came to Nazareth with the disciples, the people didn't see Jesus as a prophet, teacher, miracle worker. They saw him as a carpenter. When Jesus taught in the synagogue at Nazareth, the people thought he was trying to break the rules and move up in social class. They were repulsed by Jesus and fell into sin. Turning away from God tends to result in sinning. Think of what the people of Nazareth missed because they did not welcome Jesus and have faith. He would have welcomed that. Jesus would have done wondrous things. Do we limit God by having a narrow viewpoint of what God can do? What great things can we be missing because we have a limited view of God and what God can do? Now, rejection didn't stop Jesus. It didn't even slow him down. Jesus dealt with his rejection. He looked at it philosophically. He didn't pout. In the same verse that says Jesus was appalled by the unbelief of the people of Nazareth, it says Jesus went teaching in the surrounding villages. The disciples witnessed the rejection of Jesus. They would soon be sent out with the power to teach, heal, and cast out demons. Jesus made it so the disciples had to find somebody's house in order to spend the night. He warned them about rejection, and he gave them instructions on what to do when they were rejected. And Jesus would be rejected often. The cross was the ultimate rejection. 
When Jesus took our sin upon himself, he experienced the rejection of God. So I ask you, reevaluate your view of God. Are you seeing the full range of God's power? Sometimes it takes life experience and study to expand one's view. But don't make the mistake that the people of Nazareth did. Don't limit God. Just believe. Amen.